Just a short clip to go through using the quadratic formula to solve a quadratic equation. So here's a quadratic equation, x squared plus 5x plus 3 is equal to 0. And we're after the values of x that make this mathematical sentence true. You know, if you put x is equal to 10 into here, you'd get 100 plus 50 plus 3, you know, 153 is equal to 0. So x equals 10 is not a solution. If you look at the graph over here, you can see that the graph is going to the values of x are minus 4.3 and minus 0 0.7. But if you put those in with to correct to one decimal place, then they wouldn't be exactly zero. But we'll see the numbers that it will give you exactly zero in a second. So the first thing to do is to realize that uh, in this quadratic equation up here, a is equal to one. There's an implied 1 next to the x squared. B is equal to 5, which is the coefficient of the x term. And C, the plane number on the end, is 3. And then you write down the quadratic formula, which is x equals minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And the sooner you learn that off by heart, the better off you'll be. Um, so then we just go through and substitute a, b and c values into this formula and work it out. The b is 5 and so we've written minus 5 here because the formula calls for minus b. So we minus 5 plus or minus 5 squared minus 4 times 1 which is a times c which is 3 all over 2 multiplied by 1 which is the a value. And when you work that out you get uh, these numbers 5, 25, 12 and 2 and 5 plus or minus the square root of 13, which is 25 minus 12, over 2. And that means you've got minus 5 on 2 plus the square root of 13 on 2, and minus 5 on 2 minus the square root of 13 on 2. So you'll notice that this minus 5 on 2 is halfway in between these two x values. So here's the x value, which is minus well, minus 5 on 2, it could be 2.5. Minus 2.5 minus root 13 on 2 would be roughly equal to minus 4.3. And minus 5 on 2 plus the square root of 13 on 2 would be roughly equal to minus 0.7. And in the middle, the coordinates of the turning point would be at minus b on 2a. This part. So that's 2.5, minus 2.5. So you can see that that's roughly there. Alright, so what's interesting is you can change these values and all the maths changes in the solution and you can also see that the in the graph here that the equation, the, the, the turning point is moving and it's sort of interesting to know that when you change the B value in nice steps of one that that carves out, makes the turning point carve out a parabola, which is sort of an interesting thing. And if we turn that off and turn it back on, if you change the value of A, it makes the turning point, which changes the steepness of the graph, but it also makes the turning point carve out a straight line which is interesting. And if you <laughs> turn that on and turn it off and then you change the value of the C, that makes the turning point carve out a vertical line, which mightn't be so much of a surprise. Anyway, just a little bit of interesting maths on the end there.